find the indefinite integral of x cubed minus x over x squared plus 1 quantity squared dx. So for this type of partial fraction integral, we know there's no linear terms. We just have powers of quadratics. There could be linear terms in here, but this will be easier to pull apart if we leave them out for now. So we proceed as usual. The rule here is going to be same as with the multiple linear factors. If I have a power on top of my x squared plus 1, I'm going to use the highest power. And then I'm going to have to put a term in for all lower powers. And then on top, we'll have our ax plus b, cx plus d, and so on. Since I only have a square here, we'll only need two terms on this side. I clear denominators. So that's going to give me x cubed minus x equals ax plus b plus cx plus d, x squared plus 1. So the first method, which is probably the method you'd want to use, is just to expand this side entirely and then match up powers of x on both sides. So we'll have, there's no constant term here, so we think of that as just being 0. Then on this side, the constant term is going to be b, and we have a d times 1. You could go through and do all those. See, in this case, doing it this way, the answer falls right out. We're going to have c equals 1 when we check out the cubes. Then d equals 0, a equals minus 2, b equals 0. Method 2, which is going to be a lot more work than this, but sometimes this is useful, so it's worth throwing out. If you get lucky, the linear combinations line up and make it easier than doing it the other way. We could take derivatives to grind down both sides of the equation. So the idea here is if two polynomials are the same, then the derivatives of both of those polynomials will be the same also, and any further derivatives of those polynomials too. So on this side I have 3x squared minus 1. Here we're just going through the ax plus b terms into an a, and then we're just going to use a product rule to get these terms here. I can take another derivative. That'll give me 6x equal to what we're getting here. And then going to this one, taking the third derivative, we'll have 6 equals 2c plus 2c plus 2c, and then we get c equal to 1 falling out immediately. But this is actually going to be the same equation that's pulling off the x cubed. All right. We can, let's see, let's noodle around with this. So we have c equals 1. Um, if I put x equal to 0 in this equation, notice that everything's going to go away except for the 2d. So I have 0 equals 2d. So we get d equals 0. In the top term, I can put Let's see, we're going to use 0 also, so I'll get a minus 1. That's going to go to 1 times c. That's going to go to 0, so that goes away. So we have minus 1 equals a plus c. And that gives me a equal to minus 2. And then if I go to the original equation and put 0 in, we'll have 0 on this side, b, and then just a d. So 0 equals b plus d. But we already had that. And so that's going to give me that b is 0. So the idea is it's kind of a 6 and 1 half dozen of the other. Sometimes it's useful, so I just throw it out there. But you'd probably rather use this one. OK, we stick in our coefficients. So we're looking at minus 2x over x squared plus 1 squared plus x over x squared plus 1 dx. So note the substitution that I'm going to use is going to take care of both of these at once. I'm going to substitute out u equal to x squared plus 1 because the derivative of x squared plus 1 is on the top. Okay, that's going to be the x up to a factor. So that gives me du is 2x dx. We get dx equals du over 2x. And now we notice if I put the u in for the x squared plus 1, we're getting something where the x's go away. So I just need to be careful bringing this half in. So I'm going to have minus u to the minus 2. So to take the antiderivative of that, we're going to add 1 and flip it over. Adding 1 gives me u to the minus 1. Flipping that minus 1 over gives me a minus, which cancels that minus. Then here we have a 1 half du over u. But du over u is going to integrate up to natural log absolute value of u. And then we have the half out in front. And so when I put my u's back in, 
we'll have 1 over 1 plus x squared plus a half natural log absolute value 1 plus x squared. And we could tidy this up a little bit, but why bother since um, this is good enough? Okay, there's no terms to combine for the natural log, so we can leave it there. Let's check. So I do my derivative of this. This is a special quotient rule. It's going to be minus the derivative of the bottom over the, deriv over the bottom squared. So minus 2x, 1 plus x squared, squared. Derivative of this, we just take what's on the inside, put it in the bottom, then multiply by the derivative of the inside. So it gives me a 2x. So the 2s are going to go away. I have to pick up another 1 plus x squared if I want to put them over a common denominator. And that's going to be just what I need to get my x cubed minus x in the top. So this checks out.